Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ryan or Darwin Design here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make clean sports designs in Photoshop. Um, so this is this is the one I'm gonna be going off of. I'm just gonna be breaking it down really quick because the PSD for this will be in the description down below so you guys can play with it yourselves um, and kind of get a more in-depth look there. But just gonna be running through basically uh, the, the simple breakdown of, of how I did this and how it's all put together. So um, I start off with just this base a layer of Kenneth Walker or base photo rather cut them out using the pen tool and um, you can use whichever selection you like I just prefer the pen tool through a skin on them using Topaz uh, Topaz is an external program I talk about this in like every video but it's an external program I'm gonna have a link to it in the description um, actually I'll do just a quick quick run through of the skin uh, so I just create the clipping mask I'm gonna rasterize the layer and go to filter Topaz Topaz adjust under stylized collection I throw some vivacious on there and then lower the transparency a little bit and then I'm gonna hit apply um, if you hit apply you can kind of keep applying effects but if you hit OK then it's gonna just kind of close out and you'll be done with it so hit OK only if you're done um, I like psychedelic too so I lessen the transparency I go to classic collection throw some photo pop and I lessen the transparency on that as well and press OK because I'm done so you can see the difference um, well the skin's already on above but there you go. You can see how big of a difference that is. Um, pretty similar to, to the skin I had on there. And then threw some slick lip color, some black and white to fix the color on his pants. Uh, threw a little shadow. And that's that. Um, once again, I'm sorry if I'm going quick. I don't want to go too in depth because I do have in, like separate individual tutorials for how to do like shadows, for example, or like specific stuff on skinning. Um, so just going to break this down real quick. Did the same thing for this back mask here. You can see the adjustments are on it to... Uh, Help make it pop a little bit. Got a skin and a camera raw in there as well. Put a little layer mask on it so it fades out at the bottom. And uh, that's that. So next step, just do a little green rectangle on there. Uh, have some text here that's slanted. And this is just, it's the same text here that I used for the main text. Um, I just copied it and then I rotated it, made it larger. And then I put it on a layer mask. Uh, so it kind of fits more in between just like the rectangle um, just to give it some some kind of texture or, or uh, variation um, Just a little bit more going on in, inside the shape uh, next up is these, these kind of three like these three eyes type thing um, He's like Kenneth Walker the third or Kenneth Walker like I, I, I is what he wears in his jersey So I just wanted to throw that back there to, to get some filler um, So to get that like outline, I just got regular text you can see just I, 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 um, and then I just put a stroke on it. So under blending options, press stroke, and then you can kind of decide the, the weight you want to use. I just put it on three, um, cause I just want it to be kind of like barely visible and then set the fill on it to zero. And you'll see, instead of having that, it'll just leave the, the stroke, uh, visible. So that's how I did that, uh, through the field on there. This is just from the basic cutout from earlier. Uh, from the like original image just made it black and white put it on screen and a layer mask and then I just threw a little subtle picture of the city of Seattle um, Which is obviously where he plays at I put it on difference I just play with the blend mode a little bit whichever one I like just wanted to, to get something to kind of fill the background a little bit more use the layer mask um, to, to make it show up just kind of more on the sides and that's that um, pretty much the whole background there. Next up is text, which is super simple. Um, really, really basic. Not even much to be said here. Just Walker written out straight in this font. I don't even know how to Druk condensed web. Maybe that's, that's my best. That's my best guess. Uh, Kenneth is written in monument extended, which is one of my favorite, like wider type fonts. Um, and then I, I stretched it out a little bit. So if you go to the text properties, um, you can under this VA here. If you increase it, it'll increase the space between the text. And if obviously you decrease it, it'll become kind of closer together. So that's that uh, logo just kind of thrown over the top to fill in some space through a little drop shadow in there. And that's that had this kind of back text that I mentioned earlier, um, just the same Walker text and large and then put on soft light to uh, fill some space. Next up is the overlays, which are also really simple. Just three simple layers. You have the particles, which is just like a dust particle type overlay put on screen, opacity lowered and uh, with a uh, layer mask. Um, so it's kind of more on the sides. Uh, I brought that green rectangle from the background. I duplicated it, 
from this from this group and brought it up and put it on lighter color and then use the layer mask to uh to kind of blend it so the back photo blends in a little bit better um and then this blur here is why it is i copied both the masks uh control j and then convert it to a smart object control j duplicate them and then convert it to a smart object and then i'm going to rasterize it and then go to filter blur gaussian blur and turn it up a lot like probably like 85 or so um and then under blending options right click and go to blending options color overlay i put the blend mode to color and i set it to just kind of like a little bit more of a vibrant blue I'm trying to get like a, a little bit above uh that that seattle blue which is a little bit dark and then i'm gonna convert it to a smart object and put it on screen so that's how you get that kind of like faded like soft type color of that blue um and then I just use a layer mask to brush it on the edges like that and just to give a little bit of, of glow um you can see how it shows up it just gives it a little bit like pop a little bit and then next up is the cc that's that's the composition um pretty simple for cc i'm gonna copy the the whole group as a whole and then merge it and then i'm gonna take this rectangle like marquee tool and layer via copy so all that's selected is is the document size um because i'm going to be doing a bunch of of work in camera raw here so the reason i have a base layer is so if i for example if i press Control t here you'll see the the document is 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 not fit to just this document size like everything else that's outside the boundaries comes with it so this allows me just to work with the document size it makes it easier if it doesn't make sense uh like if, <laughs> if what i'm saying doesn't make sense then don't worry about it it's not a big deal it's just kind of personal preference um but yeah this is this is how i do it so i got my base layer here and then i'm gonna add some camera raw so with a filter camera raw filter and what I'm going to do here is just make it pop a little bit. So I'm going to use this first panel, uh, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, darks, texture, clarity. That's typically like what I do. Um, but honestly, it, it depends on the photo um, and how your designs look and which pictures you're using, the lighting, everything. So this is just like my personal preference for this design. Like it's not uh, a consistent recipe I use every single time. You know, it's a little bit different. Um, the process stays the same for the most part, but like the values that I use uh, differs. So you can see here um, this whole breakdown. So I have the base, now I have the camera raw, and now these, all these uh, layers, vivid, high contrast, warm pop, all that is camera raw filter presets. So I'm gonna copy and merge my CC group and then go to filter camera raw filter and then click this here, which is the presets. And you'll see everything that's mentioned here. So here's vivid, high contrast, TR11 natural, TR11 is under travel, um, FTOA, FTO7 is under futuristic, and then warm pop is under adaptive subject, which is actually pretty cool. Um, it like auto senses your cutout and it will only apply the, the preset to your cutout. So that's what that is. Um, but basically just go through all these and then I would select the preset, lower the fill and opacity, use a blending or sorry, a layer mask, invert it, and then kind of brush it in wherever I want it to show up at like that. I'm going to name it as always. Got to have, got to have these organized PSDs can't get lost in here. And then I'm going to merge it, copy it, merge it, and then repeat the process for all this stuff. Um, and that's basically what I did here. So as you can see, just kind of going through each one has its own kind of twist or their, its own kind of effect it has on the image. Um, so I just went through, found things I liked, and that's that's what I did there. I would recommend looking through all of them because each one could have its own tone or whatever. You could see a, a certain way you could use each one. So um, definitely don't just stick to these ones. This is just what I liked for this image in particular. So um, look through them, play with blend modes, opacity, fill, layer masks, obviously, um, things like that. So you can kind of take and pull a little thing from each one um, to, to kind of come together and create like one whole collective color correction, which is, I think you see here is it, it really kind of takes the design to the next level with, with the original design, it just feels a little bit flat. Um, and so this kind of brings out all the colors, makes it pop a little bit more and, and just, yeah, ultimately takes you to the next level. So uh, that's pretty much a quick breakdown of how I did this. And as I mentioned before, there will be a download link to this PSD in the description uh, down below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments or hit me up on my socials, which are always in the description. 
And uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much all I got. Hope this helped. And I appreciate you guys for watching. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Peace out.